Hello, welcome back. Let's get straight back into it. We know about this. We know about this. This is a cool script. I actually made a lot of um, earthquakes when I was making hexen levels because they're just very satisfying to do. You, know, you make all these bits of rock fall away. Oh. Oh god, there's a load of Afrix as well. Can we just sort of get out here and go on the side? Is this open yet? Yes. Oh, shh, isn't it? So I guess we want to sort of entice them through here. And there's these Ettins that are still on the thing. They fell off last time. So this is going to be a bit of a problem. Can't hit these unless they get closer. So there's... So there's no sense being gung-ho about it. We literally can't hit them unless they're in front of us. So we have to try and get them through here somehow. And there's a secret down there. There's a... I don't know what it is in there, but it's cool and I want it. I've forgotten is what I'm saying. <laughs> I would very much like to be able to use my blue mana at all. <laughs> there's a load of it, but I don't know where the weapon is off the top of my head. <laughs> Perfect. You're in. Yeah, bring it on. These are also causing light. Um, I was just saying in the last episode about how the blue mana was casting blue light, but these Afrits are casting yellow light, which is also something that never happened. Enemies... Everything was flat, okay, and it had to be. I mean, I'm, I'm not casting shadow on it for being what it had to be to... Actually, we don't have to... Flame mask. It is a usable item. I mean, I don't want to cast Shadow on the game for being what it was at the time. That was it. That was the game. You know, you were... Yeah, that is now... Not open. Okay, cool. You made the best you could with the resources available to you, and I guess there were a few more resources available to Hex than there were to, like, Heretic. I keep saying these things in, like, as though I'm disgusted by them, but I don't mean that. It's just the... This is my own personal cadence. I keep expecting this to be open, because I pulled that switch, but maybe that switch just does something in the other level, so let's have a look. Because we can go back. That ethereal travel, by the way, used to take forever. <laughs> it used to be the, you know, have a stretch moment. So there are only three hits, but you have to make sure you can actually hit them that three times without taking too much damage yourself. Anything here open? This third one's opened here. And there's a switch inside it. Which seems like a terrible idea. Yeah! Let's um, put this here and try not to kill ourselves with it. There you go. I don't know how much damage it does. But it's got to be better than our bullshit weapon, right? Ow. I also need a better way of changing between my active items because this isn't, <laughs> it's not really cutting it. So I, I believe that switch opened this door. So having, you know, cross level item activation, like, things changed, man. Just these open in a curve, they hinge open as a result of something I did at a different level. I know I'm getting excited about something that is commonplace, but. Back then, it really, really wasn't. So let's go back into this level. Now we're in the Guardian of Steel. Oh shit, this is where centaurs turn up. I'm not quick for centaurs. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm out. <laughs> is there anything else open? Like, can we get up there yet? No. There's a lot of um, Etins spawning around the place, which doesn't fill me with joy. Surely we get an, a weapon soon. This is going to get really difficult if we can't do some more damage to these Etins. Because that's still going to be there. No, they're fucking behind me. Oh, shit. I don't, I don't know how to deal with this. I've got nine of these, though, so I guess we just keep using these uh, quartz flasks until we're not dead. I thought it said two before, to be fair, so I was getting a little bit worried, but we've got loads of them, so I guess we try and get through this without taking too much damage. And then we can start picking up, you know, environmental HP. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I would have had the uh, axe by now if I was a fighter. Do you know what it'll be? 
I believe that on not really fucking difficult mode, the axe or whatever the cleric has as the, as the first um, mana using weapon would have been on that pillar that drops on the on the main hub. Since we're on impossible mode, I mean, I assume at some point we get that weapon because there's so much mana for it. Yeah, we can't go through the whole thing on base damage. It's silly. But at the same time, I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> oh, fuck. Better use that before we actually die. These things do a lot of damage. And I'm trying to punch it with this thing. They also fire extremely quickly. Which is the main issue I'm having. But at least we've got modern day... Uh, attacking type principles, right? You know, I can dodge back and forth very easily. These uh, lighting effects are really cool. I think they would have been possible in base Doom Engine, but at the same time, maybe not. I used to really like writing scripts for Hex, and one time, I think it was, it was in the 32-bit days, so it's not like we had major issues. But I managed to run out of memory, making a, a sort of a canyon trap that fired a lot of darts and fireballs. I ran out of memory trying to contain all the data to do that in some sort of array structure. It probably wasn't in an array structure, let's be fair. This is probably the very first thing I ever wrote in any language. I probably had one, um, one variable per, per item, per, per spawner. I had quite a lot of spawners, so to give credit to the game, it tried. Having these scripts to... they certainly add a lot of depth to the game. Just having things that are randomised occasionally. Where did it go? Did it die? Even being able to jump is new <laughs> in this game. Right, we'll pull these. <clears throat> That was a very horrible sound for a switch to make. I haven't saved it in ages, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do it just because it might go wrong. Let's play. Save it there, um, just in case something goes horribly wrong. Not really expecting it to, but you never know. You know, sort of the switches go back up again. Um. That is also part of the scripting engine. These, I believe, move something around, but I don't think I've unlocked it yet, so maybe I have to go somewhere else and I've missed it. Let's, um, let's head on back. Oh, shit, that actually literally scared me. <laughs> um, I'm expecting these to go up the stairs at some point, so clearly something's gonna happen at some point soon. Maybe we wanna go back to the first of the three. See what we can see there. I'm going to try and try and uh, go and try and try. I'm going to try to try to keep these episodes fairly short. Um, just because you know, there's only so much of me dying and fucking this up you can cope with, I guess. But it also means that I don't have to, you know, sit here for hours playing Hexen. Although honestly, I could play Hexen all the way through in one sitting if I had the uh, the time to do so. I don't know what that rumbling noise was, it went away. Ooh, crystal vials. Oh, there's what we want. There's a normal health, okay. Right, that took us into there. This takes us into here. With the door open. Which is this door. There must be something else in here. Right? We pulled that switch. We've pulled one third of the puzzle. I haven't got the fire key. I haven't got any keys. This is open. That's down. I... Man. What's wrong with me when I can't beat Hexen easily? I feel like I've missed a step. So let's see. That's down. That was a teleporter. That's down. Nothing else is open. 
there another switch in here? I think there might be another switch around here somewhere. Is it behind this pillar? No. I get the impression I've missed a switch. I also wish that that uh, weapon were there, because this is normally where the first weapon is on slightly less impossible modes. No? That's the Guardian of Steel, which obviously has nothing in it for us, because... Well, let's have another look. Still, uh, still spawning in as we arrive. Not that. Like, oh, this just straight up open. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, a uh, small amount of design consideration. If you're going to have one impassable door that looks like that, having another passable door is not that uh, great an idea. So, let's go in here. It's another situation where there's just so much flexibility to the Hexen engine compared to the original Doom engine. The speed at which that moves and the delay were not. Ooh, there's a thing that we want. Let's see if we can get down there. So we're going to have to just be very careful with the amount of uh, damage we do and take. Do make safe thing. So these are just piss annoying because every time you do damage to them, they block it and you have to wait a second and try again. Now these switches move some slidey things down in the basement. That's how that shit works. Oh, fuck. That was a mistake. Was it? Might have been a mistake. Like you could jump in original Hexen, so that was a perfectly legitimate thing to have done. It wasn't just because we're using a modern engine. But I think Hexen was the first time you could jump as well, so lots of firsts. But the really big thing was this, um, this, um, ow, hub world thing that we were talking about, because we've already been to three separate levels right now. Uh, pulling switches that affect the central world. And then got confused and stuck. I want you to die before something appears behind me. If you don't mind. Thank you. Six hits. Six fucking hits. Now down there, that's a key. With the steel key. Um, there's an elevator somewhere, basically, and I'm going to try and get into it. But you can see how this is... Um, it's quite obviously a spiritual successor to Heretic. It's got a lot of the same aesthetic. But also, it contains those serpents, which are the same things that the serpent riders rode. I don't want to pick that up, so I'm not going to. So here's... Yeah, this is... Oh, fuck! Well, now I want to pick it up. <laughs> What's this bullshit? Yo! Don't taste me, bro. Let's see if we can use a flechette. Oh, there's no way I'm getting up there. Let's open this. Go around here and try and beat it up from the other side. We can move really fast, actually. What's down here? Another Etin. Seven hits. Christ. Where's that? Seven. Why are you there? Come down here. We're going to have to go up there and sort of kite it around. The garden like a teddy bear. Let's see if we can get around here and up there before it catches up with what we've done. It's taking some damage. That's pretty good. This is a bit of a wonky tactic to use against these fuckers. Good, that worked. Uh, it gibbed it quite considerably. Let's not walk through our own poison. It does damage us too. Sorry, what? Holy shit! I can hear a, a Wendigo. Wendigo or Wendigo. It's up to you, I guess. So here's a, another example of a script. This door opens, this door closes, then this goes down, then this door opens, sideways, which is cool. Then that door closes, that door opens. That one doesn't open. Close. Down. 
Close down, close. Down. Guess you have to do this the hard way. Reset everything. That's a bit of a pest. I mean, the scripts are not what you would call complex. And look at the lighting on it. Um, you can tell it has nothing to do with the lighting of the sector that it came from. Which is a, a bit of a shame. But, I mean, there's limitations to such an engine. It keeps making whack noises, but it's not actually hurting me, which is minor, minor disconcert, finally disconcerting. So this thing here is a huge metal block that goes all the way down here, and the switch is upstairs. Slide it one way or the other. So we're going to have to get in here, press that button, and run away. Before these motherfuckers kill the shit out of us. So we actually need the, uh... The thing to be in that direction, so we want to go over there. Which is this way. Definitely that HP now. Pull this, which I believe moves it, in this direction, rather than opening up this side. Because I think that was the first one we pulled. So we pulled that one more recently, so we should have had the desired effect in here. Three, four, five, six. Goodness me. One, two, three, four, five. That was only five, so I guess we looked out on that one. So here's another puzzle piece. And we have got our serpent staff, which has a weird blinking eye on it. And now we can at least do ranged damage, so let's try that. Ow. Still bad though. Am I this bad at Isaac? Yes. Let's uh, use this because I'm scared. At least we've got something behind us now. Of course we're using mana for this, so at some point we're going to end up falling back to our other weapon. But we've, we've pulled three switches, so that's three thirds of the puzzle that has been solved. How much mana do we get? Enough. Probably 20? I would expect 20. So let's jump through here. Ethereal travel takes zero time. Used to take a long time. So you can see how small the levels are and the sort of sizes that they were divided up into. Now oh, this one's okay. You know what? Let's. Uh, oh, fuck, I used it by accident. Ah, uh, see, no, it's not necessarily too bad a thing. Uh, I press Q because I've been playing a lot of Left 4 Dead 2. And in Left 4 Dead 2, Q switches to your other weapon. But in this game, of course, it's 1, 2, and 3. And possibly 4 if we can find all the pieces. I've never played this game at this difficulty level. Um, so I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get through it without taking all the stupid damage in the world. And I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get through it at all, to be honest with you. Because um, it's been a while since I've played it, and when I played it, I was a kid. So I was about to reload. I've definitely been playing too much modern zombie-based catharsis. Look at the amount of mana we're using, though. Is every shot using... Oh, there's only one. It's a very simplified game, at least. You know, there's... There's two types of ammo. There's blue mana, and there's green mana. And some weapons use blue mana, and some weapons use green mana. Not even that. There's one weapon that uses blue mana. 71. 49 to 71. What? That's like... 32? 22. That's a strange amount of mana, but okay. So this is where we start meeting Wendigos. Which is scary too. I'm not going to pick up the mana, I definitely want to make sure we uh, min-max that to a decent extent. Hello. I'm also min-maxing it by using my shitty weapon. I've never had to put this much effort into a game of Hexen. So that is a Wendigo trying to beat the crap out of me. So you definitely get a serpent staff treatment, but other units don't have to. I think that Wendigo just hurt that Etin, so that Etin's going after that Wendigo, which is fine with me. I don't think it's going to last long. And these are really difficult to deal with. Don't shoot the wall, it's not very useful. Unfortunately, I was wrong. 
I was going to say I don't think the particles hurt, but in fact, I think maybe they do. This is turning out to be a lot harder than I anticipated. I'm not quite sure how to deal with these motherfuckers. Right now. Guess we just get in there. Where are they? I want to reload, but I don't need to. It's a strange feeling. Plenty of quartz flasks, which honestly is basically the only thing keeping me alive right now. Or possibly literally the only thing keeping me alive right now. I don't like using so many of them, because obviously if we're going to take this much damage like this... This is really hard. And I shit you not, I am not even playing right now. I'm having trouble. I got squished. <laughs> oh, game. You really know how to take the piss. Well, I'm going to leave it there because I've died twice and I'm very embarrassed. But uh, thank you for watching. I hope you'll join me in the next episode and I'll see you then.